Welcome back. Campaigners are calling for routine screenings in pregnancy of a common infection in adults which can prove fatal in newborns. Uh, on average, two babies develop a Group B strep infection in the UK every day. One of those sick babies will die every week, with another survivor left with long-term disabilities. Sky's Emma Birchley reports. Five years old and full of character. Good boy. What does this one do? But life with Frank isn't what Kate had imagined. The newborn she brought home from hospital seemed a healthy baby boy, but he quickly stopped feeding and within hours had had a seizure. Doctors broke the news that her three-day-old son was critically ill with meningitis. The reason? A Group B strep infection and the damage done would last a lifetime. I just remember feeling incredibly guilty that it was an infection that I had carried and that I'd passed on to Frank. And also that I didn't know about it, you know, I hadn't read enough, I didn't, hadn't done enough research. That was how I remember feeling at the time. Just really responsible for, for passing this on and not knowing. Group B strep, short for streptococcus, is a type of bacteria. It's very common and usually harmless. In fact, between two and four in every ten women carry it. But there's a small risk it can spread to the baby during labour, making them ill. That happens in about one in 1,750 pregnancies. And one baby a week dies as a result, with another surviving with a lifelong disability. Kate joined a support group campaigning for all women to be screened for the bacteria during pregnancy, so antibiotics can be given where necessary. As it stands, the test is only available privately. Jane Plum set up the group after her son Theo died when he was just 17 hours old. A trial is underway, but 80 hospitals are needed and so far only 30 have signed up. It really is a now or never moment. You know, we've, we've been uh, campaigning for preventing group B strep infection in babies since 1996. Um, without having the robust evidence, the policy won't change and the GBS3 trial is absolutely the UK's best and probably only shot at being able to get the evidence uh, to uh, affect change. Frank has cerebral palsy and epilepsy as a result of the infection. Despite that, he's thriving. But Frank's incredible and amazing and we wouldn't change him for the world. It's just, it is difficult to know that this could have been prevented. Now Kate is determined to see a time when no other baby is put at risk. Emma Birchley, Sky News. Well, in response to that report, uh, the government has said this. There is currently insufficient evidence regarding the benefits of universal screening. They continue, we keep this evidence under review and will consider the results of an ongoing large-scale clinical trial when it reports. Uh, joining us now on the programme, the former Olympic sprinter Ewan Thomas. Uh, now, his son Teddy was diagnosed with Group B strep as a newborn. Ewan, great to have you on the programme this morning. Um, just tell us a, a little bit about, about your wee man, um, Teddy. If, if I've got my maths correct, he, he was born at the tail end of 2018. Um, yep. and, 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 and that was when, of course, you learnt for the first time about Group B strep. Yeah, unfortunately for us, like so many others, we were unaware of, of this infection. Our midwife didn't even tell us about it. No one said, listen, you can go private, get a test done, we recommend it. And that's the thing that's so upsetting. It is so, so preventable. We, we were lucky though. I mean, Teddy was in intensive care for 10 days. And on the one hand, listen, I love the NHS. I'm, I'm forever in debt for them saving my boy's life. But I often wonder, at the cost of keeping him alive for 10 days, what is that in comparison to a 40 pounds test? And I just wish people were aware of it. And that's why like so many others, I'm just a big advocate of campaigning and letting people know, look, it is out there. Don't worry if you are a carrier of strep B because it can be prevented from passing it on. I've luckily had another child since, 10 weeks ago, we had baby Dougie. Um, intravenous antibiotics were administered during labor and Dougie is fine. So it is so preventable, but yeah, we, we could have been so much less fortunate than what we are. I mean, Teddy is a ball of energy, he's fantastic, but he still has complications. We're very lucky, as I said, but he had to have three operations last year and he still has issues because of his immune system was so weakened by the illness. But I just, I just really hope people can take this on board and, and get this, this done, this trial done in 80 hospitals, as you said. Jane is so amazing. 
from the charity. She does such great work and I'm forever grateful for her and the campaigning she continues to do. But newborn babies don't have to have this illness. They don't have to, unfortunately, live with complications if the government will get on board and do something about it. Um, Ewan, first and foremost, congratulations uh, on the birth of your second. Well done, I'm sure. Uh, that's part of the reason why you're looking so perky at this time on a Saturday morning, a newborn yeah. in the house. Um, but, but tell us, though, just a little bit more, if you can, in, in as much detail or as little as you'd like about these complications that, that, that Teddy has experienced. I mean, this is a condition, as we saw in the report from, from Emma Birchley just a, a few moments ago, that if your child is unlikely enough to contract but lucky enough not to die from it at the time, there can be implications, health implications, for, for the rest of their life potentially yeah um for us as i said i sit here very fortunate that teddy is very mildly affected by it so every kid gets a, a cold as you probably know when they go to nursery they pick up bugs unfortunately for teddy that normally turns into a viral infection or a bacterial infection where he's rushed into hospital because he can't breathe so he had three little minor operations where he had his um, adenoids taken out his tonsils taken out and some grommets put in his ears um, listen, if that's the worst it gets, we are so grateful and lucky for that. But I can't tell you that the, the trauma we went through where Teddy was born, I went home, the happiest man alive. Four hours later, I get a call saying quickly, he can't breathe. He's in intensive care. And I was like, how can this be? He was perfect. And there's something called strep B. I said, what is it? And anyway, 10 days in intensive care where he was fighting for his life. And I remember on day four, four new doctors ran into intensive care I'd never seen. And they said that we need to rush him away now. His blood level scores have gone through the roof. We need to do a lumbar puncture. We think it's it's in his brain, in his spinal fluid. And it was just the, the panic of not knowing what was gonna happen. And also the fact that we were told he may have cerebral palsy. Um, if he has, he has, we'll live with that. But we weren't able to know for a whole year of his life whether the symptoms would develop until he was at least one year old. So I think it's not, not, not knowing, but as I said, I, I feel very lucky that it could have been so much worse for Teddy. Most people who know him say, crikey, your, your kid is, is crazy, he's full of energy, he just doesn't slow down ever. But they don't see him at night where he's up through the night coughing and being sick. And, you know, he, he, as I said, he does have complications, but it could have been so much worse. But it could have also been totally prevented. And that's why we're trying to get this trial through to the 80 hospitals, as you mentioned, 30, thankfully, have signed up already. We need 50 more just to get this trial on the way. At the end of the day, we want to prevent babies from dying. We want to prevent babies living with disabilities for the rest of their lives because it's so unfair. And for me, the most unfair part, people aren't aware of this infection. Midwives, people need to talk about it. I understand at the moment the NHS don't routinely screen for it, but at least tell what expected mothers. At least say, listen, there's something out there. You might want to go private. It's £40 at the moment to have a private test, which, yes, it's a lot of money for some people, but it can prevent such serious, serious illness. Yeah, I mean, you, you have my sympathies. I've got a six-year-old, and if I'd gone through anything close to what, what you and your partner have had to deal with, you know, I would have been up to high dough as well. Just, just explain, though, with universal testing, you would discover whether or not, and uh, as Emma was saying in her report, you know, between two and four in every ten women are, are carrying this at any time. If they get a positive diagnosis of Group B strep, what do we do with that diagnosis to try and prevent it from being kind of passed on during birth to, 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 to the little one? It's quite simple, actually, and what I would like to stress as well to so anybody out there who is pregnant, do not panic, do not worry, even if you are a carrier, it can be prevented being passed on to your newborn. So it's as simple as when, when, when the, the, the waters break, you're going into labour, they administer an antibiotic drip, which will make sure you get the necessary antibiotics inside the, the, the lady, the woman, before she passes it through to the child during birth. So it, it, it's pretty simple, to be honest. It's, it, it's antibiotics during labour, which will mean the baby cannot contract or hopefully won't contract strep B, and at least you're in the right place. And if they're aware you are a carrier, then all good hospitals and maternity wards will take that con into consideration, and hopefully the mother and baby will be protected. So first of all, get yourselves a test, and let, let's hope that this study can go through and the trial can go through, and we can find the best way of spreading the message and also getting those antibiotics into the, into the woman. Um, Ewan, we're going to have to leave it there, but I have to ask, how, how's wee Dougie doing? And indeed, how's Teddy getting on with his brother? <laughs> yeah, well, you can probably see the bags under my eyes. Um, <laughs> ten week old, so he's up quite a lot during the night. Teddy is absolutely brilliant with him. He's so affectionate. And honestly, I'm blessed with the most beautiful two children. So I'm very, very lucky. Teddy's a great big brother so far, a ball of energy. And I think Dougie's going to be pretty much the same. So, yeah, I'm very lucky. Sprinters of the future, I'm sure. Um, enjoy it. Enjoy these times. Ewan, many thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. A few of the other stories making the news.